Hello, it's Samantha again, and I'm here with another awkward introduction. If you clicked on this video, you probably read the title and decided you wanted to watch it. I hate me. I'm going to be explaining all about AC chemotherapy. I have no idea what that stands for. I'm going to Google it real quick. It's not air conditioning. It's not alternating current. Cyclo... How do you say this? I'm gonna Google how to say this. Cyclophosphamide. Cy, cy, cyclo, cy, cy, cyclophosphamide. 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 AC stands for adriamycin and cyclophosphamide. I'm going to be explaining what happens when you get it. The side effects that I had, yeah, and probably some other stuff that I can't think of right now. So I already finished my AC chemotherapy. I had four rounds of it. So I don't have a full-on vlog, but I've got lots of videos and pictures of everything. April 5th was my first treatment, and I did it every other week from then. It's basically a typical day for me. Arrive at the cancer center. It took me, like, probably a full month of going there to stop laughing at the name because it just sounds really serious. <laughs> I would get my stylish bracelet that has my name and my birthday on it. I would wait in the waiting room until they were ready. Then I would go back by myself and they would access my port. It's just a medical device that is in my body. They did surgery to put it in so it's under the skin um, and they stick it to give me my chemotherapy. It's just so that they don't have to give me an IV in my hand or my arm every time because the chemotherapy would tear up my veins in my arm so if it goes through the port it gets directly pumped out through bigger veins and stuff that can handle it. But what they do um, when I go back there is that they just take some blood so that they can send it to the lab and they can check and make sure that everything looks okay. Then I go wait in the waiting room a little bit longer and then I go meet with my oncologist. Every week the nurse asks me a bunch of questions about how I'm doing on the chemo and my side effects and everything. And then she asks my stress level and I always say it's great because I think that's a dumb question. And then they uh, just measure the bump. Uh, in my breast and uh, check to see if it's gotten any smaller. Mine did get smaller. It started out uh, 3.5 by 3.5 centimeters. By the third treatment, I think it was 2.5 by 2.5. So after my checkup, I go and I find a place to sit. I usually like to try to find a heated chair because I get cold easily. They have to do a few things before they start giving me the chemo. In the checkup, they checked my height and weight. I don't really know why they need to keep checking my height because I'm done growing. The amount of chemo that they give me is very dependent on my height and weight. For instance, on the first day that I went, I had a lot of extra weight left over from my egg retrieval surgery. For the adromycin, they had two big syringes of it. They had one tiny little syringe. They all were joking about how it was really funny that there was like this tiny little syringe with a little bit of medicine. And then the second day I came in for chemo, I had lost five pounds by then because I was just going back to my regular weight and that extra little syringe was gone. They didn't use it at all. So it really doesn't matter how much they give you based on your weight. Even like two pounds can make um, a small difference. Anyway, I go and sit in the chair and before they can even give me the chemo, uh, they have to give me nausea medicine. Some of the nausea medicine is pills and some of the nausea medicine they pump directly in through my port. They get the medicine from the pharmacy. They start with the adromycin. It is very red. They can't just put that on the little machine to pump directly in through my port. It's very important that someone, a nurse, is there to watch it being put in and it is important for them to keep checking as they're putting it in if there is blood coming back so they push the red medicine in and then they pull back and they make sure that they're still getting blood return. It can cause severe, severe burning if it doesn't go directly into the veins. The nurse also needs to wear a huge cover and protect themselves while they're injecting this into me because if any of it gets on them, they saw that it caused bladder cancer. So 
This is not normal medicine. It is a little bit scary. They're basically just putting poison into you. Also, because of that red color, it afterwards turns all your bodily fluids red. Your urine will be red. Basically, bright red the very first time you pee, and then after that, it starts fading a bit away. It gets like orange, and then this is really gross. It starts turning back to the regular color as the week goes on. It's supposed to do like all your fluids, so somebody said that they tried to cry to see if their tears would be red. I don't know if they were successful. I don't know, so if you're doing this, that could be something to try. Okay, so after they drew my sin, they have to do the other one, and I'm not gonna try to pronounce it again. And that one can just go straight up on the machine. I guess they do it over 30 minutes, usually. I only did it over 30 minutes the first time I went in because that one uh, can cause your nose to start burning. It was probably in the last 10 minutes of getting the medicine that I actually noticed it and my nose just kind of started burning like in the inside. After a while it started like going up into my head and I like felt like my brain was burning if that makes sense. It just caused a headache. By the end I only had like two more minutes of it. I was like all right just keep going I'll make it through. What helped me was instead of going over 30 minutes the next time they did it over a full hour. I still every single time felt the burning but it was only in that like last five or ten minutes that I would feel it so I would usually just push through and it was never as bad as the first time it never caused a full-on headache the headache and everything completely went away after 20 minutes so it's not like it causes permanent damage or anything while they are giving the second infusion they attach a new lasta patch they put it on my arm. Um, they can put it in your stomach or basically wherever you're comfortable. After they put it on, it starts beeping. It tells you that it's gonna stick you. It makes this whacking noise. <laughs> and then it injects the little tube thingy, I guess, into you that it will use to give you medicine. The medicine doesn't go in right then. The medicine goes in 27 hours after the infusion. After the 27 hours are up, it beeps again and then it injects the medicine and it takes about 45 minutes I think and I think it beeps when it's done too and then you just peel the whole thing off. So we'll talk a little bit about side effects. That first day for me is usually pretty, was always pretty good. My very first time I felt perfectly normal. My pee was red but I felt perfectly normal. So I was like I'm gonna go to Zinburger which is one of my very favorite restaurants burgers and milkshakes. It was a very heavy meal. Uh, that first night felt really bad. Well, I was very close to throwing up. I didn't throw up. I just felt so bad that first night. And then I never wanted to go back to my favorite restaurant for a very, very long time after that. So I do not recommend eating a full heavy meal on the first day after your chemo just because you don't, you don't want to do that to yourself. You don't want to eat your favorite meal and then not ever want to eat it again. That's just torture. <laughs> I felt horrible fatigue. I felt tired for an entire week. It was unlike anything I had ever felt before. I went to college and I pulled all-nighters all the time. I never had any problem. People were always like, how can you not sleep? Obviously I was tired a lot, but I could still function. I could still go to classes, I could still learn things, I could still remember things still walk around and not feel like I was gonna fall over. I, I'm not one of those people that can't function on no sleep. So it was very, very weird for me to feel this level of tired because I was sleeping. I was sleeping all day long. I would just wake up and still feel the exact same amount of tired. I couldn't do anything. My brain was foggy when I would stand up and start to walk places. I'd feel dizzy. I would want to have somebody with me. The best way that I can describe it is that I felt like I didn't exist. <laughs> it's like I was walking around and I didn't know if I was actually on the planet. It just felt so foggy, it was, it was crazy and it lasted about a full week. I would get the chemo on Friday and then I wouldn't start to feel better until the next Saturday. And then since I didn't have my next infusion until the next Friday. That whole week I felt totally fine. I felt better than fine, actually. I don't know if I felt better than fine or if it was just such a drastic difference from the week before. When you're doing this, you start to get this appreciation for like how you normally feel and how you can normally go about life because it is just so amazing when you feel great. I originally thought that I was going to be able to get these infusions on Fridays. I would maybe have to take off 
Monday, possibly Tuesday from work, or, or just work from home on those two days. It ended up being that I couldn't work. I either worked from home or I didn't do anything. I slept all day. My nausea, it was worse the very first time. They gave me nausea medicine. The problem with it was another side effect of, of that nausea medicine is that it makes you tired, so I didn't really want to take it and make myself even more tired than I already was. I would rather feel a little bit nauseous than feel more tired than I do. And that was just because for me, the nausea was not as bad as the fatigue. Um, obviously some other people, their nausea could be so bad um, that they need, they want to take the medicine. One thing that I started to notice was it felt like I could smell everything. After the chemo for like that first week, I just feel like I smell horrible. I feel like I smell like hospital, I feel like I smell like different chemicals. And I started complaining about my clothes smelling. They didn't smell, but I thought they did. I was smelling all of this stuff that I didn't normally smell. I hate ketchup and the guys that I work with put ketchup on their eggs every single morning when we go down for breakfast and it always disgusted me because I just think that's gross but now I was even starting to smell it more and more and it just it made me want to throw up. My taste got worse. A lot of people complain that food starts to taste metally. For me what happened was food just started to taste more bland. I started noticing this on Tuesday after my treatment on Friday. I went to Cane's. I noticed that the cane sauce, it tasted more watered down. It just tasted like they had taken the cane sauce and poured extra water in it and it just didn't taste as good. And I said something. I was like, this does anyone else think that their canes just doesn't taste as good today. And my dad actually agreed with me. He was like, yeah, I think that the sauce is more watered down than normal. And my boyfriend was like, no, I don't notice anything different at all. And my mom was kind of like, I don't know, maybe. It was kind of a gradual thing. I started noticing it with more things. But the thing was, is that I would always blame it on myself or blame it on like the food at first. I'd be like, oh, this coleslaw doesn't taste as good as I remember it tasting. There must be something different about it. And then it would click in my head and be like, oh wait, no, I just can't taste things now. That really sucks because then you're kind of like, food doesn't even taste good anymore. It's, it's not, a, it's not fun. <laughs> I noticed the metallic thing every once in a while when I was using a metal fork. So sometimes I would want to switch to a plastic fork. I don't think my taste has completely gone back to normal, but I do think that it is starting to come back. Another thing is with the new Lasta, you can start to make your bones hurt. People say that this happens pretty right away after they get the shot, and um, what can help with that is Claritin. For me, it didn't happen until a full week after the shot. That's when I started to feel better. I would feel completely normal otherwise, and then I would just get this horrible bone pain, and for me it was like in my hips and like in like my lower back. Sometimes I'd get like these rat random spasms of it just like hurting really bad. But it went away in about 36 hours, 24 to 36 hours, and then I felt completely normal again. Hair loss! That's like the number one thing that everyone wants to know. On the 19th of April, I had my second round of chemo. I think that weekend is when I really started noticing hair loss. My hair used to be super long. I cut it short right when I started chemo because I knew that this would happen. It was about above my shoulders just because I was like, I'd rather have shorter strands fall out than really, really long strands. But even with my hair that short, it was still... <laughs> very annoying uh, having it fall out. So I did a buzz cut. I had that haircut 19 days after my first chemo treatment on April 24th. That was basically when I couldn't take it anymore. Cut it down to a buzz cut. I kept it like that for a while and then more and more hair started falling out, started leaving like white patches everywhere. And then I was like, okay, I'm just gonna shave it completely. And that is where we are now. <laughs> There's still little parts that I think are still growing. The rest either completely fell out or just isn't growing anymore. You know, other some other places, like just on my arms, kind of in patches, like my head. And then uh, underarms. One day I was just shaving under my arms and then it never grew back. <laughs> my legs actually I don't think has ever stopped growing. It's way thinner than before and it grows way more slowly than it used to. Like, I don't shave as often as I used to but it is still growing, so I still have to shave my legs sometimes. Having no hair is actually kind of great. Uh, I really enjoy it. I can get up in the morning and not have to worry about doing my hair. I can take a shower in like two minutes now. 
Yeah, so the those are the big side effects. If you've done AC chemo and you have more things that happen to you, leave comments down below. Help some other people out. Um, I hope this video helps you out so you know what to expect um, when you go in for your chemotherapy and afterwards when all the side effects come about. If you have any questions about it, leave a comment below. I would be happy to answer them. Check out some of the other videos that I've done and subscribe by clicking on those buttons that you will see. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and goodbye!